Hi everybody, Dan Ullman, Mike Beer, the DRF Race of the Day for Saturday, October the 6th is the Grade 1 Shadwell Turf Mile, part of the Breeders' Cup Challenge Series. This is a win and you're in for the Breeders' Cup Mile. Let's take a look at this field. It is a big field, it is a competitive field, and why not? Running for $1 million at Keeneland, Carnage is race number 10 on Saturday. Let's take this field in post-position order, Mike, beginning with the number one next chair is at 15 to 1, coming off a rallying win over the European style turf configuration at Kentucky Downs. Prior to that effort, he was a bit of a nibbler coming from well off of the pace in mm -hmm. Southern California. A fast pace and maybe a softer turf course might help this horse. Yeah, I mean, we'll see. It, it looks like the race will set up, if nothing else, it'll set up pretty well for his running style. You got a big speed, a big field with plenty of speed signed on. Um, so maybe the, the trip works out for him. He gets a clean run into it, gets a piece of it, as you say, a lot of smaller pieces for him, but he's twice grade one placed out in Southern California earlier this year, going a mile on the turf. So it feels like this is what he wants to do. It also feels like he's facing a much better field than he's been facing uh, right along. Yeah, you got the feeling that old friend's win was probably because of that big sure. class drop. He needed it after one graded stakes race after another. They put him in that restricted spot and he came closing. It was a firm turf course at Kentucky Downs, but probably less firm than the ones he's used to at Santa Anita. We're expecting a little bit of rain at Keeneland over the weekend. Maybe he'll appreciate some given the ground. The problem is he might not be as good a closer as the next door neighbor, yeah. the number two Divisadero. We know on his best day with cut in the ground, Divisadero can rally. The source is a multiple grade one stakes winner who I thought was completely compromised by a lack of pace last time out in the Woodbine Mile. My question for you though is, do you think he's come back the same this year? Um, that's a fair question, I guess. I'm not sure if I feel like he's quite as good as he has but in years past. On the other hand, he's still pretty good. When he gets the right kind of setup and he gets a trip into it and they run him at the right distances, he's still a pretty good horse. Um, I'm with you. That would buy a mile to me. It's just a race you do not want to put a lot of stock in. He had no chance the way that that race was run. This should set up a lot better for him. Can he get a clean trip? Can he beat all these other good horses? I don't know if he can, but I'd be using him at least underneath him. I think he's going to get a better setup I this time. I would expect a good late run from this horse as he preps for the Breeders' Cup mile at his favorite track, Churchill Downs. Yeah. The three is great wide open, and this is a veteran trained by Connor Murphy, who popped a career best 99 buyer speed figure, most recently at Kentucky Downs. Now, he was beaten that day by a horse he'll have to face again, bound for nowhere, and I thought he kind of got an easy lead that day. Yeah. There wasn't a lot of closing going on. There wasn't a lot of pace in the race. I credit James Graham for giving this horse a nice ride. He was just second best. Yeah, I mean, that trip's not available to him in this race. I don't know what he's going to do in here. Um, I thought he ran um, fine in that last race, but he didn't run nearly as well as the winner did. It just feels like he's in a way tougher spot this time. The number four imperative is closing in on $3 million yeah. in career earnings. The problem is he's a turf maiden going out for a barn that's 0 for 34 <laughs> over the past five years with older horses moving from dirt to turf. I think if you want to make a case here, it's he's got a ton of back class. Yeah. He's going to get a good amount of pace to run at. I don't know. Imperative has run well on synth in the past, the long distance past. Yeah. I'm not sure if he's the same horse at the age of eight, but at 30 to one, there are worse shots with his back class. He should be a bigger price than that in this race. He probably will be. We'll see. Look, at it. it's, it's Luch. They like to take shots in races like this. There's nothing wrong with that. He's a classy old horse. The thing about him is his turf races aren't that good, and you know, you're know you going way back to get to those turf races. They're, they're in claiming races, too. It's not like he was a stakes horse at one time. I don't know, man. He's just really hard to make in this race. The number five is Heart to Heart, one of several speeds in here. Let's throw up the time form U.S. pace projector, and it's a rare day when Heart to Heart is not on the lead <laughs> in the time form U.S. pace projector. That shows how much speed is in this race. Now, we've always talked about Heart to Heart. When he is able to get to the front, he gets brave. Yeah. When he chases, he's still good, but not as good. He's chased in his last two races, and it hasn't worked out. Do you think Julian Leperu, despite the presence of other speeds in this race, is on ascend. I mean, I'd like to see him put this horse on ascend because I think it's his best chance to win. Um, and he's clearly good enough to win this race. I just, I feel like when there, when there are other speeds signed in the race, um, they're perfectly happy to let another horse go and track him behind. And I think that's probably what they'll do here. Um, and listen, it almost worked out for them two starts back. I mean, they turned another horse loose on the pace in the Shoemaker. He ran his race that day. He got by to a short lead in the stretch, but he couldn't hold on at the end. I still thought he ran okay. But he's just, I mean, it's pretty clear by going through his races one after another, he is better when he's on the lead by himself. And it feels like he's not going to get that trip today. He can still win. I'm not going to bet him, especially if he's the favorite. He's a classy horse that likes Keeneland. He was the runner-up in this race last year. But it's interesting that he hasn't exactly 
broken as sharply as he has yeah, in true. some of his other races, and I wonder if that's a sign of age, and if he doesn't break sharp, he certainly can't get to the early lead. Yeah. The sixth synchrony, I think, has been handled masterfully by trainer Michael Stidham. He has put this horse in confidence-building spots where he can win. He didn't summer this horse at Saratoga. No. He kept him at Monmouth, where he was odds-on in a couple of graded stakes races, and he got great rides by Joe yeah. Bravo to beat overmatched fields. Yeah, I mean, both times, they were just races he was probably going to win anyway, but Bravo just gave him the perfect trip right up the inside, both times better than those horses he's not better than these horses I guess the question is you know how well does he fit in a field like this I think he fits okay especially if the pace is there for him he will come running at the end they tried him in one grade once over this year did not run poorly in the turf classic at Churchill Downs in that grade when he finished third this horse I think he fits pretty well in the field and he's gonna be a price the number seven is Carabon interestingly enough this horse shipped to North America as a turf maiden yeah. he did most of his damage on a synthetic surface in France Kieran put him in the Bernard Baruch at a big price he came with a run on the outside it was not the strongest Bernard Bernard Baruch in the world, no. but he got it done off of an extremely long layoff. A lot of times these European horses come here not only for Lasix, though, for firm turf, and yeah. I wonder if he's going to get that firm turf at Keeneland this weekend. I mean, I guess we'll find out. I mean, you know, I thought, all things considered, he ran fine in the Baruch. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with the race that he ran there, and he got a figure for it. He was always sort of on the outside chasing. He made a game run in that race. I guess the question um, for me would be, and I guess the question I'll ask you, how good was that, Brooke? I mean, I'm just not sure that it was that good. I'll give him all the credit in the world for winning that race. Um, I think it's a totally different ball game. I think he's in a lot tougher this time, so I don't want him in here, but maybe he's this good. Now, to me, it's a big step up yeah, in class. So Forge and projected right now, project his grade three types. This is a true grade one test, but he looked good in that race. Multiplier goes out for trainer Peter Miller, and at first we thought the longer the better for Multiplier, who actually ran in the Preakness and Belmont on dirt as a three-year-old. He's won some good races on the turf. Last time out, I'm gonna not going to hold that race against him at all. He didn't have to like Kentucky Downs. I think he's run some decent races with trips. He has a little bit more tactical speed than possible, but I'm just not sure what he is. Is he a mile and a half horse? Yeah. Is he a miler? I think there are other horses with better kick. Yeah, there are distance questions for him. I don't know what his best distance is either. Um, what kind of trip can he get in this race? And even if he gets the right one, is he even good enough to beat a lot of these horses? I didn't think that he was. The Keeneland Turf Course can be a horse for course course, especially yeah. when there is give on the course. And analyze it, the number nine won the grade three Transylvania during the spring meet over yielding go. After that race, Chad Brown tried to stretch him out. Heck, that's where the big money is. And he got beat three times in photos, and it looked like each and every time he should have won. Yeah, he probably should have won all those races. He had the advantage in the stretch all three times. Um, and then the question is, you know, was he just... Is it just a situation where those horses are catching up to him now? He was so dominant over them late last year and early this year. Are they just catching up to him? Um, is he a horse who sort of lost his will to win? Is the distance too far? What, are, you know, what was going on with him in those three races? <laughs> I personally think it's distance. I think he's better going shorter, and I love that Chad's turning him back to go a mile in this race. It's no easy spot for him, but I love the turn back for him. I think he's a dangerous horse. I think he's a very major player in this race because I agree with you. I like the cutback in distance, and there's no shame now at looking back of getting yeah. beat by Catholic Boy. Maybe Carrick, that loss, was very bad at in the secretary, but he was close to a pretty fast pace and made the first yeah. move into it. I think he can make some excuses for this horse. Nine to two on the morning line. I like him cutting back. I like him getting to Keeneland. Voodoo song is the number 10. He has one way to go. That is to the front. You've got Heart to Heart in here. You've got Bound for Nowhere in here. And you've got that line in the Bernard Baruch. That yeah. was a very disappointing effort at 3 to 5. It really was. I mean, I don't know what happened in that race, and I don't want to be, you know, too hard on him uh, for that race, but at the same time, it doesn't inspire a lot of confidence in me that he comes back in this spot because he got everything he wanted in that Bernard Baruch. It wasn't the strongest field in the world. He got loose on the lead, and when they came for him through the second turn, there was no way he was holding on. That was a very disappointing performance. If you can find a way to put a line through it and go to his races two and three back, he ran great in those races. I don't know which one we're going to get here, Dan. I don't trust him necessarily shipping to Keeneland, taking on this field. I'm not going to bet him in this race, but on his best day, he's pretty good. Chad has the three-year-old analyze it. A three-year-old analyze it in this race. He also has the older horse in the number 11, Almanar, who looked like he was going to become one of the better turf horses in 2017. After rallying to win the grade one Gulfstream Park turf handicap, he missed a lot of time. 
He came back with an easier than it looks win in yeah. an optional claiming race off a very long layoff on Belmont Stakes Day. And then I thought he ran just fine in the Arlington Million, a race where the last run from Robert Bruce was the best run. Almanar tried to get the jump on him, yeah. couldn't get it done, but it was a good effort all in all. And the Millions come back a good race. We see Oscar performance yeah. come back to win, and Robert Bruce ran fine last week. Yeah, Joel Rosario did everything right in the Million last time. He got him to settle. He was a little bit hard to settle this horse early, but he did get him to settle. And then he got first run on Robert Bruce. But you know what? This horse probably doesn't really want to go a mile and a quarter. At the end of the day, to me, when I watch that race back, I just feel like that's probably a little too far for this horse to turn back to a mile. I think it is exactly what he wants. He's got nothing but good races on his page. In a lot of ways, there are a lot of good horses in here, Dan. He's as good as any of them. If he can get the right trip in this race, this horse is going to be very and tough. And even with good horses like Divisadero in here, it's possible he's the best closer. My yeah. one concern, while I, like you, like him turning back in yeah. distance, I wonder if he's a tweener. I wonder Maybe. if he's an eight and a this half, a nine short, for a long horse. And this could actually be a little short. And they might stretch this thing out early. Almanar might have a lot of work to do yeah. with this fast pace expected up front, but he's a solid, solid horse. I feel like the faster pace could help this horse a little bit, though, because he is a hard horse to settle early. If they get away from him early in this race, that could actually help him because it'll help him settle down, I think. Mr. Misunderstood, the number 12, has been a win machine throughout his career for Brad Cox. He's won 11 yeah. of 19 lifetime starts. And again, I'm not going to hold that Kentucky Downs race against him. Some horses just don't handle that surface and bound for nowhere in great wide open seem to really like it. The time before that at Ellis, though, he got a great trip. He beat a weak field. Yeah. It was kind of a slow race. <laughs> I love his tactical speed. I'm just not sure. Is he a grade one type horse? Yeah, I, I'm not sure that I think he is either. Um, and I'll even as I say that, though, I will go back to the Makers 46 yeah, in he April. Didn't he, didn't, he ran well in that race. I mean, that was a really rated pace by heart to heart. He was off of it, um, down inside, all through stretch. He actually ran better than it looks in that race. It makes me think he's not over his head in here, but he's still got to prove it against this field. Big score is the number 13. He's 30 to 1 on the morning line. I'm going to try to make a little bit of a case for him. He won the Transylvania here over good going in 2017, so we know he handles this course. And last time out in the Del Mar, hand, uh, Del Mar mile. A race that's come back pretty sharp. The seventh place horse came back mm -hmm. to run third in a graded stake with a 102 buyer speed figure. This is a horse that just swung extremely wide turning into the stretch. He finished with some interest. He yeah. galloped out okay. And just think, it was only his second start of the year. He did some good things when shipped to the East Coast in 2017. Listen, he maybe he's an unlikely winner, we'll but he's a giant price. I think he at least get a piece of this. Another horse who fits the race flow well. It feels like there should be pace for him to close into. I think that's what he wants. Um, I'm with you. I thought he ran fine last time in the Del Mar race. I thought he ran fine his first start off the layoff, too. A race that he really didn't have any chance. Made up a ton of ground in that race, though. This horse is pretty good. Boy, this is a tough spot yeah. for Dan. I, I felt the same way. Dude. I kept looking at this race yesterday thinking, this horse is interesting. He had a huge price in this race. I don't know if I can use him on top, but I can use him somewhere. Bound for nowhere. Talk about a horse for course. This one is two for two, lifetime at Keeneland. And he answered the distance question last time out in the yeah. Tourist Mile. But going into the Tourist Mile, there did not appear to be a lot of pace. Yeah. And he was able to sit right off that long shot, great wide open. He won, I thought, pretty well in hand by a length with a triple digit buyer. So while he proved he could get the mile, yeah. he proved he could do it against that field. Now he has to do it from post 14, yeah. chasing a fast pace against much better horses. I respect this horse greatly, but I think this is a pretty big ask, and I think he'll take some money. Yeah, I agree with all that stuff. I mean, this horse is pretty good. The post is a real problem for him. The race flow is a real problem for him. And even though he got the mile last time, he got it after a perfect trip. And there was a point in mid-stretch where it looked like he might win by five. And listen, maybe he was just, it was so clear, it was so over, he just didn't put it away. But he was letting that horse come back on him a little bit late in the race, so it makes me wonder how far he really wants to go. He's tough for me to like in this race. It's a fantastic race, the Shadwell Turf Mile. It is every year, and it's part of several multiple race wagers. I think it's kind of a spread race. Yeah. Let's take a look at our top picks. In Chad, you trust. The 11 Almanar gets the cutback he needs. It looks like he's racing himself into shape. Nine to two would be a fair price. Yeah, I think it would be. We'll see how they bet the race. I like this horse, though, and I like him turning back. I think all of his races are good. I think this is a good spot for him. Mike's going to go 11, 2, 9, and 13. I'm a fan of big score. He's very lightly raced this year. Only two starts. I think he's going to appreciate some give on the ground, getting back to Keeneland. It's all about trip for everybody in this race. Maybe he gets the right one, but you get a big score because he's going to be a giant price. I'll go 13, 4, 11, and 7 in the Shadwell Turf Mile, the DRF race of the day on Saturday is part of the Breeders' Cup Challenge Series, a win and you're in for the Breeders' Cup Mile. You can catch our colleague Matt Bernier on NBC beginning at 4.30 p.m. Eastern for all the coverage. Best of luck.